weekly Dama News Entertainment is here for your weekly roundup of what's been happening in the Kendama sphere. I'm your host, MJ, and I'm going to bring you hot topics, possibly hot takes, speculations of things that have happened within Kendama, within this community, this world that we all love. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing to think about how we all just share this one passion of playing with a wooden toy that keeps you involved, keeps you having, just enjoying yourself. Uh, and with everything getting like a lot more lax, you know, I don't know where everyone's coming at me from. Let me know in the, uh, in the comments right here for the live stream, where is everybody? Just because, oh, are you, oh, and if you guys didn't know, hanging on the live stream, questions already started. So at the end of the uh, weekly drama news, I always do Q and A. So if you have a question, put it in right there, but let me know in the comments for everyone who's joining in right now, where are you guys at? Cause I was, as I was saying, you know, things are getting more lax here in Japan. It just last Monday, the government finally said, you don't have to wear masks anymore. Everyone it's up to you. It's your choice. If you would like to wear a mask, let me know if the audio is weird. It's kind of like, so here we go. We got people from, oh yeah, we got some Minnesota, Canada, Denver, Philly, Utah, the oh, open Maine. Where are the crabs? Uh, we've got Colorado, Denver. I missed I miss a few. Who else? Shout out San Diego. Yeah. Glendale, Arizona. But yes, just this past Monday, Japan was like, all right, you don't have to wear masks. Before they were like, they, they were uh, earlier this year, they were like saying like lenient. All right. In like public areas, if there's a lot of space, you don't have to wear masks, but you still have to abide by if people are putting up signs, grocery stores, restaurants or anything wear a mask. When you go on the trains, wear a mask. It was just released that we don't have to do that anymore. And with that comes all these signs all over the place. All the supermarkets I go to the trains, when you're going into the stations, there's no more signs that say, put on your mask. All right. But, but there's still like, when I go out, I was just in Tokyo this past weekend. And there's probably 95% of the people are still wearing masks. Now there is, uh, I've heard in Japan, like spring pollen allergies is really, really bad. And they say that this year is like 10 times worse than it usually is. So anyone who was suffering is, it's like really kicking them in the ass right now. So then there's one point of why people wear masks in Japan, especially in a lot of Asian countries. I know in South Korea too, Taiwan, it's normal to wear a mask. Before the pandemic, it, like if it's flu season, if you're going out, the, the weather, it gets really, really dry here too in, in the winter. So it's easier to get sick. Um, so it's common to wear masks beforehand for any of this shit. So it wasn't difficult and nobody complained about having to wear masks for the most part. But uh, yeah, now it's open. So it, there's there's one like wall barrier of going out, being a little nervous, going out, being scared to do events more, all right? Kendama World Cup just happened since the pandemic started last year for the first time. And if you heard any stories from any of the Western folk that went, it was pretty like, you know, fucking tumbleweeds going every once in a while. Not many people were there. And from all the experience that I've had going to KWC, it's kind of all the, the, the tourists, the people from overseas, the athletes from overseas coming to Japan that rowdy up the whole event, like even more. So I'm happy that events are happening in, in Japan too. More events are popping off. There's more being created. I know, you know, Livco over in La Las Vegas just happened. Looked like an amazing event. I like to see all those people out there, you know, having a good time. Uh, I think if you go to their Instagram account, you can find some of the, some like live streams or something. Oh, shit's shaking. Shit's shaking. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just happy about all that shit. Cause that means more opportunities for a lot more things. And as we hear, yeah, right in the chat is Japan fully open now? Question consider traveling to catch and flow. Yes. I mean, Japan is fully open. They do have, um, regulations. If you are coming to Japan, you need, you don't need actually, they recommend three vaccines. 
to come in and you won't have to worry about any kind of like paperwork or getting tested beforehand or even i don't think they do quarantine if you got three vaccines they don't do quarantine but if you have only two then i think you need proof uh, or less i think you can come in with zero vaccines and as long as you come in with a, a negative test result then you should be good and you might have to do some quarantine so that mm, kind of messes with you you don't want to quarantine for 14 days on a trip if your vacation days are only like 16 days right double check everyone don't take my word for it yes i live in japan i do not frequently travel out and back to japan so i don't know what it's like and you know i've had uh, a permanent residency so any kind of visa work that you would have to do or, or many specific things that you might have to the hurdles hoops you might have to jump through to come to japan definitely go to uh your check out the japanese embassy in the town big city near you and they should have enough information monday morning over here in the jp time hope you're all doing good having a good weekend let's go into what's been happening within this week of kendama or actually you know we're gonna start off with youtube because i'll probably forget it because i never i don't have that saved youtube have you guys been checking it out then things that i've recently saw um lotus isaac talked with ben harold for like an hour or two very interesting went really really deep into like ken dama like just what's your like daily routine asking about that stuff uh specific motions uh, or, uh like brain thoughts pretty much of ben harold and like how he comes up with tricks what does he do does he write notes anymore um how, how was creating fringe case what did you think of fringe case uh, big deep dives into it so go check that out if you are also on youtube might as well swing over to sweet ken damas they have a ken game tournament going down with the sweets members sweet staff they need a cool thing You're like, come on you got sweets protein you got sweets mob and then what it's just sweets staff crew they need, we need a better name for them so <laughs> there's a tournament going on so you can go check it out i think they've been popping in a little bit uh and i just watched Maroka versus paulson it's good stuff good clean stuff i think everyone can you know learn a little bit from it too because coop and and sweets are commentating on it and explaining how like yeah if you throw some like this person's an old school player so they're throwing all these old gems in that this new school player isn't really honing in on like maybe they know how to do but not as well as the old school and vice versa so it's it turns into like a mind game which it really can be uh th there's a lot of like pre like unwritten rules of ken game where like you don't have to follow it all of course you know ken is free it's like art music do whatever the hell you want makes you makes you good makes you feel good uh and you're not stepping on people's toes hey but there's yeah there's a few points example like you know to start off slowly with games of ken you know unless you've got to catch a train you got to get going but yeah get into the mood feel out the players you know learn some things from them and get the pacing in because it can make it for like a more fun experience than just getting destroyed zero to one you know or not even what zero to one three to three to three to zero so go check those out another one that has been happening that i really enjoyed watched the premiere of actually cron movie the new cron movie went out road to ekc it was very interesting how you learn a lot of like behind the scenes of what that tour was like it was like a week lead a week leading up to the event the crom team the, in in europe traveled around did a, did a bunch of like mini events here and there and then finally landed their way to ekc it's such a great piece because it's not your traditional kendama edit it's a documentary of the seven dudes i think it was seven dudes i mean a group of dudes stick around there just traveling together meeting each other meeting everyone else talking about kendama playing kendama yeah there's like uh, there's towards the end or yeah a little bit towards the end there's like the edit version where they're they're slight they're slapping tricks down but a lot of it is like getting to know the players and that is like that was the best that was the best part because yeah we see them if we're not people who are living overseas or whatever if we're not people who are living in europe then you probably don't know these guys and 
to see that, you know, Krom sees them and picks them up, it's like, there's something. They're more than the average player. They bring something to the table. If if a company is going to help them out, kind of bring them under their wing and support them as they support each other, as they support the company, right? So it was really cool to see and hear more of these people. So you can go like learn more about them, check out their Instagram stuff, follow them and stuff, share, give love to the Euro homies because they each each continent, I feel like that plays Kendama, brings a little something interesting to the table. And Krom has always kept it funky since the beginning. And this document, documentary, it's it's like the uh the, the last one they did with with Bonds and D Westy. Ow. Kind of like that. A little different though. Not exactly, but it's like the documentaries. If you guys don't want to talk about, just go and watch it. I don't even know how long it was because when you watch a premiere, it doesn't show you the end. And I didn't look back. But that was a gem, guys. Gem. You can go, go check it out. Yep, yep. I mean, it's a good one. It's like probably 30 minutes. Probably, yeah, 20 to 30 minutes or maybe even longer. Maybe on the 40 minute mark. I'm not sure. But go check those out. So that's YouTube. And all the other stuff I have is a lot of just new product. So before we get into the product, let me touch upon some of the other stuff that we can discuss about. And the first one, somebody mentioned also already in the comment. Oh, it's Quan Kendamas has picked up Keanu Ki. Kidama, Kidama, Kikendama, Kidama, double A, Wyatt Bray's partner. We see the love in the community. It's just connected, strengthened, and solidified. Keeps on going. There is still the question that I brought up last week of where Wyatt is going to go. We all don't know. And in the interview from two previous weeks, with Wyatt himself, he did mention that he's not on quad at that time. He was still on jumper. But he did mention that he was always getting Quad Kens. They were giving them to her. So there was definitely a connection that was being brewed there. And we see it in full force here, c- certified, but we don't know about why it's still. Very interesting to see. But congratulations, Key, because, and congratulations, Quad, because, you know, having a solid team, people that really create a brand can really push. The, the company to be a stronger entity as it moves forward into the community. And that's something you want. Because if we look back to any of the OGs here, you probably you definitely understand that back 2013, 14, it was solid. Like you know the co, you know Kusa, which we called Kenjama USA. I don't think when did we start calling it Kusa? Was it back then? I don't remember that. Krom. All right. Swoots. They were all out there pushing it. And they all had their own little, like, niche. Niche? 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 uh, Niche. That's what I say. Every time I hear other people say it, like, differently. Any case. Their own style, right? So it's a very important thing, I believe, for any Kendama brand. And who's coming out and trying to get noticed. Of course, the Kendamas, the shapes, all that is really important. Design work, quality, it's important. But at the same time, a community, a team, is a really important thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, yes, that is one thing that has happened. Thank you, Stacey, for letting me know. I thought I saved it, but I guess I didn't. Another piece of news mentioned last time again. Sakura Classic has made its rounds. And it's coming back for another one. The past post a bit ago was showing that there are two dates that are specifically set. And there were like three other dates that had them just like dot, dot, dot. Who knows? Mm. Shifty eyes, you know. And then it was released, announced that Tokyo will be on the stop. It's going to be actually the first one. So I'm excited for it. Hopefully I can get down to it. Um... Oh, did I mean? No, I think I mentioned this last time. Now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, I'm going to say the same thing. Uh, no, I didn't have it saved last time, so maybe I did not mention it last time. Any case, it's happening, so it should be a cool one. Very interesting that it's happening first, but actually no, because yeah, the cherry blossom around the sakura are the sakura trees are blooming, not at full bloom yet, but they are coming earlier than in past years. Global warming thing? Yeah, I think so. So. Hopefully going to be a part of that. Because, come on, Sakura Classic? I've never been there. It's a classic already. 
from the title, but I've never experienced it, so it's not classic for me. Yo, so oh, that's exciting to see. It's it's in Sumida, which is a, a little a, what about like an hour and a half, a little more for me to travel out there. But still, you got you got to hang out, you got to support. So it's about see what what's up. Should be a really cool event. Sakura Classic. And then just waiting on those last two locations. Where are they going to be? I don't know. There's another event that's happening. I think, whatever. Like in the Chiba area, if anyone knows. And uh, Mizuki, who is the sole team member. She was, uh, yeah, is, is going to be doing an event. Like do a little workshop, a little performance. And then I saw that... He- in the flyer that she posted on her on her account that Chad's going to be there. I'm like, yo, Chad, oh, he's making his way back already? Uh, yeah, and it says he will be there. And then I'm thinking, like, why is this man coming? He's coming back to Japan, seeing what else he's going to be doing. You know he's not coming just for, for shits and giggles and playing around. There's going to be more things on the, on the horizon. I bet. I don't know, but he's got to be a reason. So I'm going to definitely try to link up with him and uh, hang out. <laughs> yes. So that is another thing. Chato's going to be coming back to the Japanos. Um, bop, bop, bop. Interesting one. Yeah, probably for Sakura too. Whew. Locked Studios coming in with a new brand logo. Before, you know, it was it was... What did it look like? I had I had an idea of what he looked like, what the character was like. It looked like a troll. It looks like a troll without hair. Now I'm very sorry if this is supposed to be like a caricature of <laughs> the creator. Which does anybody know? Am I the only one that I mean have I not done my enough research? It says Lock Studios scientists. Safe space for odd shapes. Who is Locked Studio? There's a lot of questions, but we don't know. Train conductor? That is totally a troll that has a hat on. You cannot see the spiky hair. <laughs> but yes, so so new branding. Right away, I thought like um, Batman. And I think somebody else was saying like like. Larry Fodder? What was it? Uh, Harry Potter? Lauder? Which connects with sweets and whatever they're doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but here's something new, and we're going to see what they turn into. Locked Studios, uh, it, they started off, I believe, with a, a different kind of logo, too. Wasn't it like a big L? <laughs> Which is not something you want to take, right? No, that I just say that. Yeah. Lock key? Your latch key kid? No, your lock key kid. So how is their original? They're, they're on their third, their third uh, in rendition of their logo. And I didn't say it's getting better and better. Here we go. Face, where are we? <laughs> lock Studios. And they do also mention that there's new stuff happening. Um, new, total new product, it seems like. They might be getting rid of their old shape, bringing a new one in, and thus in focusing on, on the change. The rebirth, if you will, of Locked. So we have a lookout, follow their account to see what's happening with them if you're not already. Back, back, back. Uh, product, product. Oh, here we go. Comp. Yes. Oh, there's music in there too. Okay. South Kendama. You guys know South Kendama? You guys following South Kendama? They're from Taiwan. I believe Taiwan. Yes, Taiwan is right there. Good. You gotta, you gotta be careful with that stuff. You know, they're mainland China or not. Nope. They Taiwan. So South Kendama is coming out and they've been doing a no look competition on Instagram for a few years now. And they're coming back. It's time right now for a no look. So all you gotta do is do tricks, make, I think it, it's not an edit, you gotta do like a solid trick or a line with your eyes contacted with the with the, with the the camera the whole time. Locked. Not studios, but eyes. Okay? And it, 
check out their their post for it it's it starts off all in yes if you yeah if you scroll down you'll get you don't have to translate it you scroll down and there's nice english explanation of it in the post and anyone can can join it's a filming no look trick video and upload to the file the file to a cloud storage site like google drive and then send it uh send the link with the application form provided so you got to get that actually where does it say to get that Whoop. okay okay missing some information there well let, let's see let's see if we go to south kendama is there no it just connects to their youtube link all right all right all right so i don't know hey oh you know nope okay well that's gonna be a question mark if you want to do that out you gotta dm them they'll post this video on south kendama's ig and that means you've been signed up successfully sign up uh order equals post order play number order okay don't understand exactly what that means but you may just need to read it a few more times over price prize prize two kendawas uh um and they say rules one two three rules one two three are only except horizontal video no vertical video very specifically mentioning those no shoot it like this everyone shoot like this so you got to set up you got to step back a little further or if you have one of those uh fisheye lenses that you can just pop on this guy then you know you don't have to get so far away but that's what you got to do check it out they've had some interesting uh contenders in the past few years you can scroll back and they're a really cool team that usually come down to kwc have a good vibe to them and they're doing interesting stuff like this every once in a while so it's good be a part of it don't block your eyes one person can submit the video or whatever check it out for more info it, it's cool it's cool and then the rest is a product i mean this is kind of product but we're not, not specifically you know chrome kendama sold out of the liquid dama and there's this dope piece of artwork done by never minds world okay really cool funky matches but they also ask ready for a liquefied restock i guess they sold out so much and maybe they got emails skags you gotta let us know that people were saying hey i missed it i wanted it are you gonna bring it back if there's demands you know they're gonna bring it back so if you guys wanted one you might have another chance to pick up one of these wonky wobbly kendamas is this something that like another factory could try to do probably not it probably be more work than uh return on on this but liquify it's coming all right and the rest is all product everyone so we're gonna slap through these with a little bit but hey we got two questions in the q a for the end so let me know if you got any more and we'll be getting into this stuff right here here we go new chat mods from the ekc kelvin oh my gosh look 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 at him so excited all right all right it's, it's like so dope that these two kelvin and alex go to europe that sounds like a movie and they both take freestyle open chattel was i hope he was crying <laughs> and we released champ mod double champ mod twin jets mod really dope see they have an edit that's out to go check it out uh very very interesting like yeah cool to see like the gold around the slip ring is really dope i like the little the little engraving on the base stall area good colors blue like there was no theme color i believe for ekc that i remember but that blue and that gold really match. And then they have a nice like city skyline illustrated. So the city skyline looks really cool. Congrats to these two. And hey, when do they win that thing? Think about, because this could be like, you know, if anyone's trying to be like, how long does it take for a Kenzama company to think of an idea, 
and then release a Dama after that. And I've overheard, you know, a few times that it's like about six months. And it can go longer if you are looking to get some uh, samples before you do the whole ship. Wow. They're so sick in person, says Jake Kenzama in the chat. Yeah. So there's first product, number one. Product number two, more champ mods coming out. Shinosuke, little Shinchan, Togo. Here's his mod. So this is one of the things that was going to be given to any of the player, whoever won Captain Flow, was, was going to get an all Kendama's champ mod. And it just goes hand in hand that Shinosuke got it because he's, he's the only, I think he's the only, no, there's two players on all. Shinosuke and Nintaro. Um, oh no, Soma, Soma, not Nintaro. Nintaro is his brother, Soma. And yeah, Kanemoto. And he just pretty much dropped his design on a gold color. There's a nice little uh, little world champ jams at the top. A little nice pad print of the globe with Japan towards the center. So in Japan, if you look at a map, and I'm curious, I never really thought about this, but depending on what country you live in, I believe the map will have your country in the center. So in Japan, that's the case. If you look at a, a normal map, like a flat map, not a globe, a flat map, 2D, then Japan's in the middle, and what is that? Europe is sliced, America sliced in half on two sides of the paper. Let me know if you're in Europe, and same goes for your country, wherever you are, if you're not in the US. So it's cool to see that you got that going. What's that? What's that? 14? Right? Does that mean how that's how old? Is that 14 or 16? 14. It's got to be 14. Because I think that's what old Shinosuke is. World champ? Look at him. So sneezy. Little Shin. Little Shin. I've known this dude since he was like, not an actual infant baby, but a baby. <laughs> so it's so amazing to see him looking like that. Champ. So, so dope. So dope. Uh, all Kendamas. I don't know if they ship internationally. Check out Jack. Ken I mean, Jack Kendama does actually. So you should be able to find it. Go and search, find their Instagram, Jack Kendamas or All Kendamas, and you should be able to find a link going to a web shop that you can purchase. So hey, 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 hey. Rylan, Alaska man, wild wilderness. Good to have you back. Uh, US has the center of the world. Okay, U.S. has the Atlantic Ocean in the center of the world map. Oh, well, interesting thing I thought of when I saw in, in Japan. And, the, and you can see it here. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Who's in the middle? I mean, Japan's like, ah, pretty much there. You, know, you don't want them directly in the center because then you're going to get slapped out with that whole punch, right? Next product that everyone wants. And an interesting one that I'm like... You know, Sweets had a bag. Kusa had a huge duffel bag. I don't think Chrome has their tote bags. Anybody else had bags? Just see few, maybe a few totes. But JT is the only company that got this sesh bag that everybody wants. So that just raises the question, why isn't anybody else jumping on the sesh bag? It's a really dope thing. Like, there's plenty of stuff out there. Go to a you and buddy. Someone's like, "Hey, I want a hamburger. I want or I want a kendama." Okay, there's so many kendamas. Each company has something a little different, but generally, there you got three cups, a string, a tama. It's made of wood. So I feel like if, if any of the companies are like, "Oh, we can't do like we shouldn't do that because like GT's already got it." No, like bring it up. GT is just destroying. Yeah, but I would like to see other people, other companies what they can do with a sesh bag you know yes the best 50 bucks spent and with a bag if it's quality come on guys that's gonna last if you split that if you spread that shit out you spend 50 bucks how long are you using it are you wearing it every day you don't have to only put kendamas in it in japan it's normal to carry a bag when i was living in the u.s I was always driving around. Even when I went into New York, like I would only put shit in my pockets and that's it. 
when I came to Japan, there's a lot more things that I needed. And I don't know why. Maybe I didn't need it, but I felt like I needed it because I'm traveling more just on pu uh, public transportation. So I always had a little sling bag with me, you know, a messenger or something tiny that I could fit some extra stuff into. And you could do that. So if you're spending 50 bucks, you spread it out, you're wearing this shit only year round. Come on. There's pennies you're paying if you would split that up to every day, right? Right? People go, oh, fanny? Are fanny packs coming back? I would never wear this thing around my waist. When I was growing up, you're a square if you do that. But hey, you were also a square to, to tuck in your shirt in your pants so I could see your belt. But I see kids doing that, so. Fashion comes and goes. So that's another one people are looking forward to. A restock, and then another restock you'd be watching out for is the Ticonderoga number two pencil from Deal With It. They are coming back in the same slit super stick. What is it? Sticky AF and uh, rubber clear. They were they were always a, a cool like jaw dropper and like it looks so dope as like the 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 in the rubber format of it because come on it's just like, like, like it's... now the interesting question was would there be any factory out there that would use an actual eraser as a tama or as a coating you know the tama it would be probably really shit heavy but if there's a way you know where's you ken damas when you need them can i get an eraser ken dama and i'm not talking about the tiny one that you can find like 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 a real one okay Next one, next one. Where are we going? Where are we going? Okay, we're gonna go with this one. Another one people are talking about. We finally see it. Scarce and Kusa getting together to release a collab Dama. It is not what I anticipated being a handmade craft shape with their with a China made Tama. It is a full China made setup. So I think in the comments, because it's not for sale yet, when is it coming out? The 24th, so the end of this week, Scarce 26 Beach Sticky Tama, Kusa and Jet Shape Maple, uh, comes with a Scarce hand dyed fade string from blue to green. That looks cool, really matches the, the Tama. Limited qualities, and they will be available on both websites. So pick where you're going to be going to pick up this Tama or uh, this Ken Dama if you want. And, and people were asking in the comments, how much is it going to be? And Scarce came and said that it's going to be like 60 bucks. Not bad. For a collab, Ken Dama, that's not bad at all. For me, it raises the question, is Scarce going to just take their game over to Hondui, the factory, and just start making them more cheaper, possibly? Definitely easier on the time. Maybe it'll take time to get the process and to actually get the Thomas back and stuff. But if you're thinking about scarce, the artist actually hand painting every single Tama, you know, depending on when you're going to need them, if you're going to want to be having like a bunch just for uh, a small batch, like for an event or something, maybe you can sit down and do the work. But as they grow, if you get bigger and bigger, it's kind of hard to, to balance your time with, are you going to be spending the time doing it yourself or are you going to ask someone else to do it? That's the predicament I've found myself in these past few months of making my own tees, silk screen, my own designs and stuff compared to asking for like a dropship company. Uh, so with the time, you got to battle it. You got to figure it out. And I'm trying to I think I'm figuring out that like, yeah, I need more time to do stuff so I can get shit out, make content and whatnot instead of spending time doing kind of the grunt work in a way, you know? You know, you feel me? Yeah. So, interesting. Scarce, what are you going to do? Are you going to still be hand painting? That was one of their special things, as well as, like, the the Tala uh, paint itself. I'm not sure. I haven't played any of them. So, you guys got to let me know what was it like playing a Scarce Tama. Was it really sticky, really tacky, grippy? Um, did it last? That's the thing with handmade, uh, homemade paints. Is that they could be really good at the beginning, but after a while, durability test, they fail. They drop off. So it's really tough to, to do. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. 
silk screening's fun so fun but at the same time it can be very frustrating and when you mess up on a few you're like damn like i can't think b grade you what are you gonna do but yeah very interesting to see because the scarce because the tamas they came out beautiful and you know they're gonna come out beautiful all the time so just like you know silk screen like yeah one came out really good next one was like ah oh, shit like the paint got a little stuck here or made a little mistake now this one's totally botched and done next one up is oh man the uh the narnia damas sweets is back at it with the v what is it called the v35 narnia damas all right Wh which which house are you gonna be a capulet or a uh montague okay so this is one of the damas this one in particular this one was the one that I saw on the um, what was it called on on Z Nick's Nick's stories back when they were doing the Twenty Eight Tricks later he posted about it and he was he hid the Thomas so we're like we don't know what it was like there were stars on it there was the red ring I was like yeah something maybe spacey like but I didn't know it was gonna be a Narnia Kentama um so th for me. I was like, this is some ballsy stuff, guys. Sweet Scandalous. Where is the line of copyright infringement that you could use something like this? Because uh, I know in Japan, everyone's like really, really scared of doing any kind of things like this. It's like where it was... Uh, uh, I remember Sweets talking with Sweets when... when no, I remember talking with Sue when Sweets was doing the Evangelion Luzumaki collab. And yes, it was like just the colorways, but in their advertisements, like they would use the characters from the anime, right? So I'm like, hey, I don't like in Japan, like it's it, it's like a really big thing. You can't do that. Like all the Mario esque kendamas like the dragon ball z one <laughs> like oh shit like so it's like wow but i guess they fly under the radar and i guess they're safe but with this one dude with the bed knobs and broomsticks collab or not collab but design you gotta watch out i don't know if there's gonna be a cease and desist or does it go into the realm of fan art where it's totally fine. You're taking, yes, some of the colorways, maybe like a motif is similar, but we changed it a little bit. So it's not total, exactly the same. Um, so it flies, but they've done it before. So I guess they're just, you know, throwing it out there, testing the waters. The only thing I'm thinking is like, you know, sweets, they order a lot. And for this, I don't know what else. To say. This Wizard of Oz one, like it's, Three different designs. Oh, so dumb. Four different designs. How many are they making of each design? Like a thousand? Less? I don't think they make less. Yeah, yeah. It's just a snake. What are you talking about? It's just a snake. Yeah. So there's plenty of stuff. And, and I don't, as you can tell probably, I don't know anything with the, the Harry Potter franchise. But I have heard, like, wasn't there some some controversy with the writer, the author? I didn't look into it. I And I don't want to. But I've overheard that, like, in the artist world, like, people stopped, like, doing fan art of, of uh, Harry Potter because there was some backlash and people were like, you should have support that shit and blah, blah, blah. So there's been, like, a kind of a downturn on that. Oh, my. I have no idea. It's a lot, though. But again, for the fans, and this goes the same for any artist out there who's like trying to make art and put it out there, get noticed. A lot of artists who are putting stuff out will get more notoriety, not notoriety, will get noticed more if they put out fan art instead of their original art, which kind of sucks because it's like, as an artist, you don't want to just make a copy. If you were someone in a band making music you either you probably want to make music original music you don't want to go and cover the beach boys they got some dope songs but 
you don't want to just go and spend your whole life career just being a cover band. So same with artists. And I feel that hundred percent, you don't want to just copy, not copy, but do a character that is already made in your style. Like, yeah, it could be fun. It helps you out a little bit, but that's not where you want to spend your time. But in this case for sweets, you know, they've, they've already had their number one in the game as of now. So this is just like for the fans out there. And I guess there's a lot of them, which yeah. Are you, a, are you a Montague or a Capulet? I don't know what the other two are. I didn't finish Romeo and Juliet. Uh, and then we got their, our last one, our last post. Yes. And then we are going into Q and a. So if you got a question, let me know. Here's the last one. The origins coming in with the horn beam, horn beams, horn beam line. Which one are you? Which house are you? Orange? What is that? Yellow? Red? Burgundy? Blue? Yeah. Blue teal? Another yellow? Is the first one yellow? Oh, there's two yellows? Hey, maybe there's two yellows. Full hornbeam kendama. There's a little story behind it that mentions uh, that Urk was had a difficult time with this, creating this line. So all the support would be very appreciated with problems getting the sourced wood, cracking, accidents while he was moving it from wherever in his car kind of breaking the car a little bit or some shit but but hornbeam full hornbeam you're like what is hornbeam a hornbeam so everyone if you guys missed it <laughs> yeah uh i opened up my origins finally after almost a year and i got of course the hornbeam can this is a beach tama and the feel of it guys the feel of a hornbeam, which is some very, very rare kendama wood, that species of wood that we don't see any other company using. Uh, possibly Kendama France was using it for a bit for their mods, but they don't use it anymore. The hornbeam, yeah, dude, White Widow. Look at this. So amazing. Um, so yeah, you know it's, it's like a year ago because this is not on their site anymore. But still, the hornbeam... Is really interesting. It looks almost like a mix between like maple, uh, a little rubber wood ish, you know, type of grain. Then you see a, a like some of it also then looks like uh, oak in ways. I'm not sure exactly the species because I'm not that much of a nerd on the wood turning side and the wood species side of it. But but I can tell you because I'm a Dama nerd that the feel in the hand is is very like chalk, almost like powdery ish. Which is really nice because if you got like, if you find it's like slippery a little bit, maybe that can give you a little grip or vice versa, huh? If you've got sweaty hands, it feels like birch to me. It feels like birch wood. So that's really cool because, you know, birch is strong wood. Uh, it could be uh, on the same uh, uh, line of species as birch, but hardwood, very durable. Or beach. I'm not sure about this guy because I just cracked him open a few days ago. But very interesting sound. Very, very interesting. Like it has a low kind of tone to it, but at like at the same time, it's like kind of kind of high, but it's just so different. So like when I was first doing like a sound test, because yeah, I said sound test because I'm that much of a nerd. Not only does it feel good to get a spike, but to hear that, oh man oh man somebody get me a tissue <laughs> and it's really interesting so if you guys are looking out you got a bunch in your collection and you want something new something different check out the origins for a horn beam a full horn beam setup i you know i got a beach i don't know what a horn beam on horn beam is like but so far it's being pretty good kind of ash-ish and possibly like weight wise but that's just this one I, I haven't had enough to really know what the um what the regular weight would be and again I'm not so much of a wood nerd so I don't know in average how these horn beams come in wood but uh in weights but this one is light it's a four it's 74 and it feels light but again birch birches can be pretty light too so we'll see as she breaks in I've been playing it throughout this weekend there's some little, like little dings here and there, but you know, nothing, nothing horrible. I'm not huge into taps or anything. So chipping would be only happening when I miss a spacewalk and I drop it, but horn beams are out. 
seven questions. That's it for all of the stories and the posts that I found for this week. Let's keep it rolling with some Q&A right now. We've got seven questions. Here we go. From Throws Before Us. <laughs> Thanks again, MJ, for the beginning speed ladder tricks for Libco. Ended up taking home first in the beginner. Yes. Hold on, let me see the rest of the question. Uh, speed ladder at Livco on Saturday. Dude. <laughs> Was it because of or just because you were hoped, you know? Hopefully a little bit of the two, but that is amazing to hear. So great. So great. Yes, there are so many things. And especially, I think you were mentioning too, that throws. Should I call you hose? Probably shouldn't call you hose. Throws. It was... If it was, I remember you saying it was your first event, uh, or maybe first speed ladder. So really hoping that all that information helped you out. And yeah, that's amazing to hear. Not a question, but love it. Next one, <laughs> Rylan, Ken Drama. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a little cafe latte out of the, um, the 20, oh no, not 20. What do we talk about? 1998. FIFA, uh, France, World Cup, when Japan went against Croatia, and Croatia took it just like they did last year. That's what I'd be drinking because it's almost, yeah, it's 11 in the morning. Oh, come on, Kochi. Top 10 Kendama players. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I see, I see you. This is one that's been going around. I don't know who started that little, like, uh, I don't know what that's called, but on the Instagram, on, on your stories, right? Tag your top 10 Kendama players. 10. Jake Weens, Matt Ballard, Keith Matsumura, um, Chris Bosch, Bones, Talkill, May, Easy. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, you guys think about it too. What? My last three? Yeah, Dave. Who were the last two? Now this feel like, this is probably why people don't throw, this is why people are probably not wanting to, to, uh, take part in this little, who's your top 10, because it feels like you're always going to be missing out on people because there's so many good players out there. Um, old and new, as you've noticed, if you remember my list right now, they're mostly old. So I'm feeling like, I'm like, yeah, I got to get new in there too. Yeah, and totally. Yeah, Rod. Rod has to be in there. He, he's definitely a big influence from old, even now until new. And then new? Gotta throw someone in there. Uh, 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 Ken Dama Puke. Ken Dama Puke. His shits are ridiculous. Every time I'm like, damn. Oh my god, what about Flox? Flox is a little interesting. That's like, again, wizardry. I don't know if I... Yeah. But Puke is nuts. Okay, that's it. <laughs> There you go. That's my top 10. Did I miss it or have New Year's new edit winners been announced yet? No, you did not miss it, Team Daddy Lynch. They have not been announced yet. Last time I heard, Rod was still waiting on a few Kenjama brands, companies, people to get back to him with the winners. And then he would make a live stream full announcement on the IG. So I haven't seen it happen yet. So that means people need, <laughs> people need a, uh, yeah. To get on it. This uh, conversation that me and Rod had that, yeah, Kendama players, companies as well, because the play, the companies are players. Uh, you know, we, we procrastinate a lot. Perfect example. Take a picture. You type of procrastinator, Google, you might find a picture of me. <laughs> and uh, the Kendama community. Yes. Yeah, so that, so, so you haven't missed it. We haven't missed it. Okay, okay. Next one. Ooh, good question from Jake. Is the foul clear just a sticky? Yes, it is. It is, but it's not just an average sticky because it is not coming from the Hungary China made factory. China made? Hungary factory in China, okay, where you're getting 95% of your kendamas. It is a kendama that is born, bred, made, painted, milk fed. In Japan and it is the same company that makes the Legacy paint uh, and kendamas and what Sue's been using since he started the the friction clear movement all right I get maybe it's not a movement because it's just his 
So yeah, same company, small, really, really small company. I think only two dudes are making everything in Japan. Uh, all the Sulab stuff, everything, even the standard models to the absolutes are made there. The Kens, the, all the Tamas are painted made there as well. So this new foul clear, which is a sticky clear, is made from them. Um, if you guys seen the Shibuya, uh, Shibuya, the, the Soul Shibuis, it's that kind of style where it's like there's a, it's like got a gloss to it, but there's a lot more coatings. So it has got a really, really sh like glossy, nice finish to it. Almost like it's a clear coat or yeah, maybe technically it is, but yeah, it's not your normal friction clear. Foul clear. Does it smell foul or is it made from chickens? You know, I don't know. I got to go to the source to find that out. Next one. Oh man. Tips on inward and double whirlwind. Okay, so technically for me, um, the inward whirlwind was the whirlwind that I was the most comfortable with at the beginning. And the normal whirlwind was so difficult. And for me personally, and I think you guys got to just try it. Try them both out. Feel what's more comfortable for you. There's a few different ways to do whirlwinds, I believe, from what I've experienced, what I've seen other players do here in Japan. Um... Of course, normal whirlwind, you're going to be putting your thumb down here uh, for the most. I think majority of people hold your thumb down here and do a flip. And that's what always made it difficult for me because I would try to choke up on the sarado and do it. And it was more difficult to really get a nice spin. But then once I went down further, then the tama control was more difficult for me. I got used to it now. But recently I've been getting into the thumb, you know, Austin Donovan style because in North America, he's doing it a lot. There's a bunch of Japanese players who do it though. Um, thumb in the cup to get that spin going. Inward though for me was always a really natural, like as I would go up and launch it out, it was like, I didn't think about doing an earth turn at all. I would just focus on going up and doing an inward Ken flip. And the Tama would, most of the time, just do a perfect single rotation. And so I didn't really have any tips on it. Like, I, it was just like loft. It's just like that. Again, I was not focused on the Tama. It's just my, maybe like my natural muscle movement that I, that I give it when I launch it out. And then I just focus on using my ring finger and my pinky on the base cup, it's like reverse of normal on your thumb. You're you're holding it down here and you give it, I think it's more on the pinky to give a little pullback, a, a little, whirp. it's like you're saying, come here with the pinky. That's all it is. Uh, and then doubles, doubles is when you really got to focus for me on a nice clean launch of the Tama to do a single while you're watching it and then just get used to like, just hook. If you're, if you're not, used to doing three and you're just working on two then hook the shit out of that just wow pop that pop that sucker so it spins real quick on so you have enough time to catch it and then watch the tama as it comes around because if you're worried about going for the ken flip looking at that to catch it at the right time and then going back to the tama you want to have more time um as well as for me guys I might have a more difficult time. Maybe I'm used to it though. Cause I got, uh, this is my usual setup. If you have a longer string, you could probably launch it and have a lot more time, but then it's more difficult. Cause you got to get a nice slow lofty rotation, which I'm not good at at all. You huck and pray. Use an upward motion with kind of like a dumping the tom off the end of side motion. Uh, that's inward for me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And same with the inward, inward doubles. If you're talking about that, it's the same motion again, just like for me, at least on, on the single rotations, but you just put more power on that pinky. You gotta do those pinky lifts, more power on that. And that should send the Tom, uh, the Ken to do a double spin. Good question. Good question. Question is still coming through. <laughs> Go from Ryland. Are you back doing dominoes in the U S afternoons? Possibly. Depending on my schedule, I've been trying to get more sleep during the nights because see, see this, uh, depending, depending. And I feel like maybe it's easier for everyone to hang out at nighttime before it was like East coasters were good when I was doing it Sunday mornings for you guys. But then everyone on the West coast, 
and was still sleeping. So we'll see what happens. But it, it's here and there. It's kind of on the fly. From Isaac Kendama, best Kendama's per, uh, Kendama performance you've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's tough to think about. Live? Probably asking live because video, like anyone can watch that. Man, I don't know. The best live, like everything that happened this past Catch and Flow 2022 was amazing. As you've heard other people who are there mention that like nobody was missing. Nobody was botching. Every round, especially towards the end, the, the final group of 16 players, everyone was on it. And it was just a, to, depending on like the style and like how many they were like racking like back to back tricks, which just hyped it up even more. And then, of course, you know, when you're with your friends, like bumping elbows, slapping, drinking and stuff, it just you get more excited. for. So maybe even like a lofty ass like J stick would have been like, oh, my God, like bonkers. Right. It's like when you go to a comedy show, you go there ready to laugh. And usually even really like crappy jokes will make you giggle a little bit. You know, you're putting yourself out there, putting some extra energy into it. So, man, I don't know. I, I, that's hard to say for sure. And if it's not on a competition wise, it's just a performance that I've seen. Even watching Zuma Dalke, the many times that I've had live, there's always a few times where it's like, oh, man, like they dropped the Tama right there, like missed the spike or missed the spin um from an audience perspective but i would have to say like recently if we're talking about performance the zero one heads easy Yua, um and yasu getting together and doing like a dance trio combination thing it was pretty dope that was that was a really nice different style different vibe and they were kicking it really cool so yeah yeah so that's what i possibly have to say it's not much of a of an answer but it's here or there Next question. Have you tried Inky Cat? No, I have not. I have not. I've seen her creating a lot of Tamas, putting in so much work, making so many Tamas. And it's really cool to see that the community is, is, is supporting her. And so she can just create more, more different things and how she has like a really unique style to, and as well as like a good eye for a Ken Dama, like a Tama design, like what's good for tracking and whatnot. It's really cool to see, so I've not tried it, so I don't know what the stickiness is, because that's what we're all looking for, right? Of course, the Tama design is really unique, very important, and especially on these, like, one-off pieces, if you see something you like, it, it's like art, you know, you, you want to pick it up, and you can't mass produce, or maybe she, she, maybe she can, but she's deciding to not mass produce, so it's like single one Tama, here it is. Maybe she can make a few, but I'm not sure about the stickiness, the tackiness of the paint, because, yeah. It's, it's, it plays a big role in kendama nowadays. Stacy comes in. How do you say I can play kendama in Japanese? I need to know for Japan Cup. Um, kendama o dekimasu. Kendama o dekimasu. Uh, and that's just a I can do kendama. But, I mean, it kind of sounds weird. I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, would I tell... Would, if I went to somebody and be like, hey, I can play Kendama. Like, I, I'm thinking of like the 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 interaction, the, the exchange example. If I saw somebody playing Kendama and they're like, hey, you want to play? I'd be like, call oh, what are you? Like, I, that, I'm saying I can do it. That's it. So I'm not saying Kendama in there. Kendama dekimasu. Shimasu? Okay, so shimasu is to do like kore kara from now on kore kara kendama shimasu i'm going to go play kendama from now i'm going to play kendama um but if you're saying i can do it you would say dekimasu dekiru you can do dekinai you can't do oru wa boku watashi so there's a bunch of different uh, ways you can say me or i so I guess the more formal that everyone learns at the beginning is watashi, is you. So you can say, watashi wa kendama dekimasu. I can do kendama. Yeah, yeah. To play, depending on what word you're using for play, the traditional, I guess the usual word that we use for play is asobu. And that means to play. So kendama asobimasu. Kendama yoku asoberu. 
you can play with kendama a lot and that's specifically saying play but you also say you play with your friends to what that situation yeah so but playing with friends to what okay um but yeah so i would say you want to say i can play kendama kendama o dekimasu you don't even need to say i watashi wa kendama o dekimasu that's what it would be or you can just get rid of it because there's a lot of times in japanese where it's just yeah, well, what's the word in english you just know it's oh man <laughs> assumed it's assumed what the subject is in the sentence so can that one take us you can do i can do what that's why can that take us that's it yep yep <laughs> all right all right we got some more did you know from boston did you know that why bring one freestyle and adrian elvel boon oh man elvan buena el elvin buena Elvin Buena. Am I saying it right? Probably wrong. One pro open at Livco. I no, I knew about Bray. I wish he like posted a little nice story about it. I think it was just like a story really quickly. Like, oh shit, look, I won. <laughs> I saw that. And then Adrian, I did see from I think your posts uh that it went that he he took first in that. So dope. And congrats, Brett, for putting that on. Um, possibly, you know, first event, but I know, you know, you work with a lot of uh, cinematography, all that camera crew stuff. So there's a lot of crew work and scheduling and timing that needs to be involved. So I'm sure you brought a lot to the table to help out with that, but also with Mia and, um, Kelvin, putting that together. Really cool to see. Um, so good on you, dude, because the more Kendama events are out there in smaller locations, is just more people get them more amped up to go out and play kendama and meet people in real life because that's where it really thrives and i'm sure that anyone who went out to that event or any events or getting ready for march madness getting the adrenaline from finally high-fiving slapping in real life not just putting like hearts and fire emojis on people now you can actually put people on fire with your words you know you don't have to unless you want to go with like a big printout of a fire emoji and just hold that shit up when they're performing you could do that but amazing to see good it looks like it was a dope event throws really more tips anytime dude it's tips on multiple juggles please so i'm not so sure for me i'm still getting into trying to lock down on just two or even three um, the big thing is going to be string length, okay? You're going to not want to have a setup like mine with a three-finger string. You probably want five or more. I think what's the average nowadays, like eight, nine? And that's just going to give you enough wiggle room or juggling room to get them to go out in, uh, which gives you enough time to catch and get ready for the next tom when the tama comes in, you gotta throw that up catch give it for another while you got you gotta huck it out but i believe one thing that you might be struggling with and i know i definitely do because again shorter string is i do the motions way too fast and i found out about this by not trying to do double multiple juggles i found out by trying to do like like uh what was it a juggle to juggle lighthouse so it's like you're juggling and then from there whap juggle to lighthouse right juggle and then throw up to lighthouse for me i was always like man i didn't have enough time it was so difficult and then i mean i think it was like ayaka who was showing me and she's like throw the tama a little harder and then that's what the key was when you go for that for that one you got to huck the tama a little bit to give you at least for me more time to get ready and set up for a nice lofty one turn up to lighthouse and i feel like that helped me crack into the multiple juggles a little more so you gotta test it out see what it's like for yourself multiple juggles are cool they're not necessary of course do what makes you happy puts a smile on your face if if you start if you start getting the furrow brow when you're playing and sweating and you feel like you want to throw the kendama 
don't just just do something simple that makes you happy. Do some spacewalk lines because that's what makes me happy. Throw me shit. Um, but yeah, I'm still on that learning side of it too. I'm sure there's like sweets and probably Chrome has a few tutorials about how to to get into multiple juggles. What's what's the the key factors? But I definitely believe you gotta want you want to have a long string. You want to give more throw than you think. So you have more time to get ready for the next item that's coming down if it's a tumor or the can. Uh, and to just keep on going. Practice. You can practice with just like two tamas. Get two tamas out. Maybe, you know, it's not the same feeling as getting a, a single can flip rotation. But if you have like a single down, then just get into the motion of doing multiple double item uh, juggling. So, so... I don't know. You can sup like some. I, I know Sue Lab. He always had juggling actual like like sand weighted plastic juggling balls that are like I don't know like that big, bigger than a normal tumble size, and so it would be really great just to like practice. You get like some hacky sacks or something and just practice to going back and forth. Get some oranges. Man, that's a classic juggling move, and just practice get that motion down so then you understand the height and uh, the, the force that you have to give each item as it's coming up and down. You know what I'm saying? Am I talking too much? You get it? Confusing you even more? Possibly. Oh, last one. Have you been asked to be sponsored? No, I have not. Well, I mean, maybe I have. Back in the day, uh, yeah, I was on, the, I was a sync. I was on the sync team, Sue Lab, the original syncs that came out. <laughs> Here's my model, um, 2014. These guys were made. Very cool, very uh, uh, amazing feeling to be able to do this. And very excited that Sue asked me to be a part of the team. But like, I mean, it was just like family. We were family, still are. But like, it was just, of course, I was going to be on the team. You know, it was as he was making everything, like I was very, very closely involved with the whole thing. So it wasn't even a question that... <laughs> If I was going to be on the team, I was just like, oh, my color is going to be this suit. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, kind of ask, but kind of not ask, but yes. But after that, nope. Over here. Free flow in, but that's the way to do it, I feel, because then I don't have to worry about just like focusing on uh, playing Kendama's for a specific brand where we can't like test the waters out with other things or like figure out like what's your favorite because there's plenty of ups and downs positives negatives pros cons however you want to say it of every kendama shape and every paint that is out there um so it's really nice to be able to just be open for everything and that's how i'm with anything in life you want to be ready and open well-rounded if you will there's another question guys technically i'm uh, yeah i'm not on the Sue lab team um uh, but i'm part of the fail i'm like you know like legend but without a mod you know with whenever we hang out like you know everybody not to sound like i'm full of myself but like i go to the events and everyone's like mj you know we're, we're a tight community and everyone knows me being connected with sue lab i think over in the states too especially with my older uh videos on youtube with crazy ken games will at jka always always hanging out with sue and ayaka and it's the best um but yeah that's it for everyone for everyone for this week of Dominus, thanks for joining everyone. Amazing to see you all here. Thanks for all the kind words. Thanks for all the questions. Thanks for hanging out. Posted just this morning, uh, last week's video, uh, last week's episode of Weekly Dominus. The video's going to be coming in a little bit. It's uh, rendering right now. Going to be getting this one out. Go to YouTube so you can watch all these nicely lined up. You can scroll real easily or go to any of your podcast platforms and you can search in Weekly Dominoes. You'll be able to find it. And I'm posting all these out there so you can get more of a deep dive or listen to my voice even more if you want to. That's just up to you. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm so very shocked at interviews. I have a bunch in the bank from last year because, you know, again, you know, type in procrastinator in Google. Hoping to get more out. Just need more time. Need another MJ. If anyone's good at cloning, hit me up. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. Weekly Dama News. 
Love you all. Have a good one. Keep it clean.